me start recording. Today we have Q&A. And it's 1.30 or 1.40 to 1.70. And it's, you have Mr. Webb. You have Webb Trucking Company. I don't wanna. Stockholder, Illinois. You have Web Service Company, in other words, Corporation. Uh, you have Obligations, Web Leasing Company, Doris Moss, Campbell Soup, uh, Contribute, that's right, Kenneth Moss, Accident, um, Kenny Northwest, that's right, and Transportation. Any questions, Monica? No, no questions. Okay, Monica. Okay. Sorry, sorry, I chimed in earlier. I was like, okay. you know what? It was a hard oh. test. Okay. <laughs> so it was hard. It was hard. So okay. don't worry about it, Monica. Okay. Um, okay. This is going to be then Monica 140, and um, it starts in the middle. Okay, for five minutes. Mr. Webb, is there another company in which you have stock ownership? Yes, there is. What is the name of the company? It is the Web Trucking Company. Are you the sole stockholder in this company? Yes, I am. Do you have an Illinois certificate? Yes, I do. Who operates the vehicles for your company? Nobody at this time. Does the company own any vehicles? Not at this time. Mr. Webb, do you have any other assets or interests? I also operate the web service company. We deal in nothing but service. In other words, it's a labor service. You provide temporary help whenever it is needed. Is that right? Yes, that's right. Is web service company a corporation? Yes, sir. Is it an Illinois corporation? Yes, sir. Are you the sole stockholder in this company? Yes, sir. Is the web service company doing business at the present time? Not right now. Does the company have any assets? No, sir. Do you operate that company out of your home? Yes, sir. What about the other companies that you have mentioned? Do you operate them out of your home also? Yes, sir. Do these companies own furniture or anything of that nature? No, they don't. Do you have an interest in any other companies? No, I don't. Are you getting an annuity income or anything of that nature? No, I am not. What percentage of stock do you hold in the web leasing company? I hold all of the stock. Are you yourself liable for the obligations of that company? Yes, I am on the real estate. You are liable on that? I am. Yes, sir. All right. Will you tell us your name, please? Doris Mouse. How do you spell your last name, Mrs. Mouse? M-A-U-S. And you live at 619 Willow Road. Is that correct? That's correct. You are the mother of Kenny, who is sitting here with us. Is that right? That's right. And you are also the mother of Mary and Johnny. Yes, sir. Are you employed, Mrs. Mouse? Yes, I am. By whom are you employed? Campbell Soup. You will have to tell me the name again. Campbell Soup Company. How long have you worked for the Campbell Soup Company? For about two years. What do you do for them? I am a cook. You are separated from your husband? Is that right? That's right. What is your husband's name? It is Kenneth Mouse. Is he employed? Not at the present time. Does he contribute to the support of the children? Very little. How did you hear about Kenny's accident last September? A man and a woman brought my son home. Which son was that? Johnny. And he was the baby? Yes, sir. He was about four at the time of the accident to Kenny? Yes, sir. Who were this man and woman? I don't know who they were. What did they tell you? They told me Kenny had been hit by a car and for me to go to Northwest Hospital as soon as possible. And? That's all I can remember. 
I just passed out. Mrs. Mouse, you were sitting here at the time Kenny was answering some questions. What have you noticed about Kenny since the accident? Well, he is quiet most of the time and he keeps to himself. Has he ever had any trouble with the police? No. Did you ever catch him smoking pot? No. All right. Now, you had some big bills for Kenny from the hospital that were paid by the welfare department. Is that right? Yes, sir. Did you yourself incur any expenses as a result of this accident? Pardon me? As a result of the accident, did you have to pay out any money? Just transportation back and forth to see him. You mean gas for the car? Yes, sir. But you didn't have to pay any hospital bills or doctor bills or things like that? No, sir. Now, Kenny was back in the hospital for four or five days in January after he fell on the sidewalk. Is that right? Yes, that's right. What happened? Well, he hurt his leg in the fall. Okay, any questions, Monica, on anything there? No, no questions. No, okay. Um, and so... There's, there's a brief for welfare, if you want that one. <laughs> EFL? W-A-E-F-L, yes. Yeah. Oh, good. Okay, Monica. No, or did I make it up? It didn't come out, but that's okay. You can enter. <laughs> it doesn't come out as anything else. And then um, pardon me is PARM, P-A-R-M. Uh, you have stockholder is ST holder, one stroke, just real quickly. And then you have uh, nature is nature. Annuity is a new T, three strokes. You have um, real estate is real with an S and an asterisk. Whatever I wrote there. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever you see. That came up. And then support is sport with an asterisk. Okay. Welfare. No. Huh? I write it W-E-F-L, but that's we feel for you all. And this will be Monica at... 150. No, there's none. But that other didn't come out, W A E F L, so I would enter that and use that. This is going to be 150 for five minutes. Mr. Webb, is there another company in which you have stock ownership? Yes, there is. What is the name of the company? It is the Tr Webb Trucking Company. Are you the sole stockholder in this company? Yes, I am. Do you have an Illinois certificate? Yes, I do. Who operates the vehicles for your company? Nobody at this time. Does the company own any vehicles? Not at this time. Mr. Webb, do you have any other assets or interests? I also operate the Webb Service Company. We deal in nothing but service. In other words, it is a labor service. You provide temporary help whenever it is needed, is that right? Yes, that's right. Is Web Service Company a corporation? Yes, sir. It is an Illinois corporation? Yes, sir. Are you the sole stockholder in this company? Yes, sir. Is the Web Service Company doing business at the present time? Not right now. Does the company have any assets? No, sir. Do you operate that company out of your home? Yes, sir. What about the other companies that you have mentioned? Do you operate them out of your home also? Yes, sir. Do these companies own furniture or anything of that nature? No, they don't. Do you have an interest in any other companies? No, I don't. Are you getting an annuity income or anything of that nature? No, I am not. What percentage of stock do you hold in the web leasing company? I hold all of the stock. Are you yourself liable for the obligations of that company? Yes, I am on the real estate. You are liable on that? I am, yes sir. Will you tell us your name please? Doris Mouse. How do you spell your last name Mrs. Mouse? M-A-U-S. And you live at 619 Willow Road, is that correct? That's right. You are the mother of Kenny who is sitting here with us. Is that right? That's right. And you are also the mother of Mary and Johnny. Yes, sir. Are you employed, Mrs. Mouse? Yes, I am. 
By whom are you employed? Campbell Soup. You will have to tell me the name again. Campbell Soup Company. How long have you worked for the Campbell Soup Company? For about two years. What do you do for them? I am a cook. You are separated from your husband. Is that right? That's right. What is your husband's name? It is Kenneth Mouse. Is he employed? Not at the present time. Does he contribute to the support of the children? Very little. How did you hear about Kenny's accident last September? A man and a woman brought my son home. Which son was that? Johnny. He was the baby? Yes, sir. And he was about four at the time of the accident to Kenny? Yes, sir. Who were this man and woman? I don't know who they were. What did they tell you? They told me Kenny had been hit by a car and for me to go to Northwest Hospital as soon as possible. And? That's all I can remember. I just passed out. Mrs. Mouse, you were sitting here at the time Kenny was answering some questions. What have you noticed about Kenny since the accident? Well, he is quiet most of the time and he keeps to himself. Has he ever had any trouble with the police? No. Did you ever catch him smoking pot? No. All right, now you had some big bills for Kenny from the hospital that were paid by the welfare department. Is that right? Yes, sir. Did you yourself incur any expenses as a result of the accident? Pardon me? As a result of the accident, did you have to pay out any money? Just transportation back and forth to see him. You mean gas for the car? Yes, sir. But you didn't have to pay any hospital bills or doctor bills or things like that? No, sir. Now, Kenny was back in the hospital for four or five days in January after he fell on the sidewalk. Is that correct? Yes, that's right. What happened? Well, he hurt his leg in the fall, and a few days later, an infection set in. Which leg was this? It was his left leg. Okay. And so I wrote transportation is TRPGS, initial TR, final PGS. Uh, left leg is LG with an asterisk, initial L, final G with an asterisk, no? LG, sorry, LLG. Monica, any questions on anything? No, no questions. I was going to ask you about the left leg. <laughs> okay, so it's L and for left, and then leg is LG with an asterisk. Okay. All okay, right. and this will be 160 then for five minutes. Mr. Webb. Is there another company in which you have stock ownership? Yes, there is. What is the name of the company? It is the Web Trucking Company. Are you the sole stockholder in this company? Yes, I am. Do you have an Illinois certificate? Yes, I do. Who operates the vehicles for your company? Nobody at this time. Does the company own any vehicles? Not at this time. Mr. Webb, do you have any other assets or interests? I also operate the web service company. We deal in nothing but service. In other words, it is a labor service. You provide temporary help whenever it is needed. Is that right? Yes, that's right. Is web service company a corporation? Yes, sir. Is that an Illinois corporation? Yes, sir. Are you the sole stockholder in this company? Yes, sir. Is the web service company doing business at the present time? Not right now. Does the company have any assets? No, sir. Do you operate that company out of your home? Yes, sir. What about the other companies that you have mentioned? Do you operate them out of your home also? Yes, sir. Do these companies own furniture or anything of that nature? No, they don't. Do you have an interest in any other companies? No, I don't. Are you getting an annuity income or anything of that nature? No, I am not. What percentage of stock do you hold in the web leasing company? I hold all of the stock. Are you yourself liable for the obligations of that company? Yes, I am on the real estate. You are liable on that? I am, yes sir. Will you tell us your name please? Doris Mouse. How do you spell your last name Mrs. Mouse? M-A-U-S. And you live at 619 Willow Road, is that correct? That's correct. You are the mother of Kenny, who is sitting here with us. Is that right? That's right. 
And you are also the mother of Mary and Johnny. Yes, sir. Are you employed, Mrs. Mouse? Yes, I am. By whom are you employed? Campbell Soup. You will have to tell me the name again. Campbell Soup Company. How long have you worked for the Campbell Soup Company? For about two years. What do you do for them? I am a cook. You are separated from your husband, is that right? That's right. What is your husband's name? It is Kenneth Mouse. Is he employed? Not at the present time. Does he contribute to the support of the children? Very little. How did you hear about Kenny's accident last September? A man and a woman brought my son home. Which son was that? Johnny. He was the baby? Yes, sir. And he was about four at the time of the accident to Kenny. Yes, sir. Who were this man and woman? I don't know who they were. What did they tell you? They told me Kenny had been hit by a car and for me to go to Northwest Hospital as soon as possible. And? That's all I can remember. I just passed out. Mrs. Mouse, you were sitting here at the time Kenny was answering some questions. What have you noticed about Kenny since the accident? Well, he is quiet most of the time and he keeps to himself. Has he ever had any trouble with the police? No. Did you ever catch him smoking pot? No. All right. Now, you said you had some big bills for Kenny from the hospital that were paid by the welfare department. Is that right? Yes, sir. Did you yourself incur any expenses as a result of this accident? Pardon me? As a result of the accident, did you have to pay out any money? Just transportation back and forth to see him. You mean to for gas for the car? Yes, sir. But you didn't have to pay any hospital bills or doctor bills or things like that? No, sir. Now, Kenny was back in the hospital for four or five days in January after he fell on the sidewalk. Is that right? Yes, that's right. What happened? Well, he hurt his leg in the fall. And a few days later, an infection set in. Which leg was this? It was his left leg. Okay, and real quickly, um, Monica, any questions? No, no questions. No, okay. Um, and so just real quickly, um, in the hospital is N-O-P-T in the hospital. Sidewalk is SWAC. What happened, W-H-A-P-D, that's right, T-H-A-E-R-T, -E back and forth is Baffert with an asterisk. And this is gonna be at 170. Mr. Webb, is there another company in which you have stock ownership? Yes, there is. What is the name of the company? It is the Webb Trucking Company. Are you the sole stockholder in this company? Yes, I am. Did you have an Illinois certificate? Yes, I do. Who operates the vehicles for your company? Nobody at this time. Does the company own any vehicles? Not at this time. Mr. Webb, do you have any other assets or interests? I also operate the Webb Service Company. We deal in nothing but service. In other words, it is a labor service. You provide temporary help whenever it is needed. Is that right? Yes, that's right. Is Webb Service Company a corporation? Yes, sir. Is it an Illinois corporation? Yes, sir. Are you the sole stockholder in this company? Yes, sir. Is the web service company doing business at the present time? Not right now. Does the company have any assets? No, sir. Do you operate that company out of your home? Yes, sir. What about the other companies that you have mentioned? Do you operate them out of your home also? Yes, sir. Do these companies own furniture or anything of that nature? No, they don't. Do you have an interest in any other companies? No, I don't. Are you getting an annuity income or anything of that nature? No, I am not. What percentage of stock do you hold in the web leasing company? I hold all of the stock. Are you yourself liable for the obligations of that company? Yes, I am on the real estate. You are liable on that? I am, yes sir. Will you tell us your name please? Doris Mouse. And how do you spell your last name, Mrs. Mouse? M-A-U-S. And you live at 619 Willow Road, is that correct? That's right. You are the mother of Kenny who is sitting here with us, is that right? 
That's right. And you are also the mother of Mary and Johnny. Yes, sir. Are you employed, Mrs. Mouse? Yes, I am. By whom are you employed? Campbell Soup. You will have to tell me the name again. Campbell Soup Company. How long have you worked for the Campbell Soup Company? For about two years. What do you do for them? I am a cook. You are separated from your husband, is that right? That's right. What is your husband's name? It is Kenneth Mouse. Is he employed? Not at the present time. Does he contribute to the support of the children? Very little. How did you hear about Kenny's accident last September? A man and a woman brought my son home. Which son was that? Johnny. He was the baby? Yes, sir. And he was about four at the time of the accident to Kenny? Yes, sir. Who were this man and woman? I don't know who they were. What did they tell you? They told me Kenny had been hit by a car and for me to go to Northwest Hospital as soon as possible. And? That's all I can remember. I just passed out. Mrs. Mouse, you were sitting here at the time Kenny was answering some questions. What have you noticed about Kenny since that accident? Well, he is quiet most of the time and he keeps to himself. Has he ever had any trouble with the police? No. Did you ever catch him smoking pot? No. All right, now, you had some big bills for Kenny from the hospital that were paid by the welfare department, is that right? Yes, sir. Did you yourself incur any expenses as a result of this accident? Pardon me? As a result of the accident, did you have to pay out any money? Just transportation back and forth to see him. You mean gas for the car? Yes, sir. But you didn't have to pay any hospital bills or doctor bills or things like that? No, sir. Now, Kenny was back in the hospital for four or five days in January after he fell on the sidewalk. Is that right? Yes, that's right. What happened? Well, he hurt his leg in the fall, and a few days later, an infection set in. Which leg was this? It was his left leg. Anything there, Monica? No, nothing. Okay. Um, then this will be for readback, Monica. We'll do 30. Just real quickly, because we'll do 30 okay. seconds at 140. Right? You're on your 140s, Monica? Yes. Okay. okay. All right. Here we go. Maybe we should do let's do that. Mr. Webb, is there another company in which you have stock ownership? Yes, there is. What is the name of the company? It is the Webb Trucking Company. Are you the sole stockholder in this company? Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, oh, que sorry. Que that's okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, question, Mr. Webb, is there another company in which you have stock ownership? Answer, yes, there is. Question, what is the name of that company? Oh, Answer, your company? <clears throat> what is the name of the company? Yes. Answer, it is the Webb Trucking Company. Question, are you the sole stockholder in this company? And then that's Very it. Very good, Monica. You sound so loud and clear. Oh, thank you. <laughs> okay. We'll get ready for your test, Monica. Do you want to stay on or log off? I'm going to stay on. Okay, perfect. Okay, I'm going to mute. Okay. I'll mute my side. <laughs> okay. Then we'll start with your 160 Q&A. And you have um, proper names. Janet L. Stern. Ellen Avenue, Sunset Lane, Matt Waller, Tom Jones, Jim Hill, Western Avenue, Near Lake Road, Sue, Thelma, and Dawn, Thanksgiving, and Florida. And this will be then your test number 160, number one. It starts at the very beginning for five minutes, okay? Let me... I'll pause it on my, um, mute it on my side too. Five minutes. For the record, would you state your full name, please? Janet L. Stern. How old a woman are you? I am 22. Where do you live? 1929 Allen Avenue. How long have you lived there? Three months. Where did you live prior to that? 4130 Sunset Lane. Who do you live with? With a girlfriend recently. 
Who did you live with before that? With Mac Waller. You are not living with him at the present time. Is that right? That's right. How come? He is in prison. How long have you known him? Four years. Beg pardon? Four years. What is the relationship between the two of you? Well, I am his girlfriend. How long has that relationship existed? Almost two years. Do you have any children? Yes, one. How old is that child? Three weeks today. Who is the father of the child? Mac Waller. I want to call your attention to the 14th day of November, 1988. Do you recall that day? Yes. How do you happen to recall that day? That was the day I sold some drugs to two federal agents. Who were they? Tom Jones and Jim Hill. Did you see those federal agents around the courtroom or in the courthouse yesterday? Yes. They were the fellows that we are talking about? Yes, sir. Where did you meet Tom Jones and Jim Hill on the 14th of November? Where I was working. They had picked Mac up already and the three of us then met me there. What time was that? About 5.15. How long had you known these two agents? I had met Tom once in July of 1988, and I think that was the first time I met Jim. What time again did you say this was? About 5.15. Where did you go? We went to Western Avenue near Lake Road. What did you do there? I purchased some cocaine. Where did you get the money? I got it from the special agent. Which one? Tom Jones. How much money did he give you? $2,000. How much did you spend for the cocaine that you purchased? $1,600. So you kept $400 for yourself or yourself and Mac? I gave the money to Mac. Where did you go from there? We went back to our house. What time did you arrive there? About 6.30, I think. Who was there? I think Sue was there. I think Thelma and Dawn were there too. How long did you stay there? Oh, about 15 minutes, I suppose. Did you make any comment to anyone about what had happened? Yes, I did. How come you talked about it? I was really nervous about it. I was scared. How many times had you done this before? This was the first time. How did you know where to get the cocaine? Well, I had been friendly with this kid, but not to purchase drugs. Who had asked you to get these drugs? Tom wanted Mac to get them, but Mac couldn't get them, so I got them. You say you stayed home for about 15 minutes. Is that right? That's right. Where did you go get them? I am not really sure, but I think we went out to my mom's. She had been urging us to get it done before Thanksgiving. Does your dad live there too? He is my stepfather. Are your mother and stepfather in town now? No, they are not. They are in Florida, I believe. How long have they been there? Approximately two weeks. How long did you stay at your mother's? About half an hour, I think. Where did you go from there? Back to our house, I think. How long were you gone from your house after having returned with the two agents? About an hour, I guess, or maybe an hour and a half. When did you next leave your house? Not until sometime the next day. Do you recall anyone coming to visit you the next day? No, I slept pretty late. What do you mean by that? Well, I had to work late until 1.30 a.m. So you slept until how late? It could have been noon or even later, probably later. Where were you on the 24th of January, 1989? Was that when the police arrested Mark? I was there. Were you there at the time? Yes, sir. I believe I was there at the time. What time was that? It was about 7.30 in the morning. Were you also taken into custody by the police? Yes, I was. When were you released? Three days later. Where did you go? I went home, straight home. And so you also have Mark, M-A-R-K, that comes out, okay? And 160 number two, you have Diane Scott, North Avenue, Miss Scott, A.C. Webster and Company, Ella, Marvin, and Joe. 
Any questions, Monica, on anything there? No, no questions. Okay. Should I not ask you, Monica? <laughs> no, that's all right. <laughs> Unmute. Sorry. Okay, Monica. One sixty number two for five minutes. Starts at the very beginning. Will you please state your name? Diane Scott. And where do you live? I live at forty two forty three North Avenue. Are you married? No. How old are you, Miss Scott? I am twenty three. Are you employed? Yes, I am. By whom are you employed? By AC Webster and Company. Is that a department store? Yes, it is. In what capacity are you employed? I am a store detective. Do you have identification as a store detective? I have a badge. How long have you worked there? For about a month and a half. Do you recall the date, November 27 of last year? Yes, I do. Do you recall the time? Was it early in the morning? Yes, it was around 2.30 in the morning. What were you doing at that time? I went to the store to do some shopping. Who went with you? Ella, Marvin, and Joe. Who went into the store? Ella and I. What happened to Joe and Marvin? They were sitting in the car. They were supposed to wait until we did the shopping. Did you proceed then, both of you, to do your shopping? Yes. Did you go through the checkout counter? Yes, we did. What happened after you got your groceries? I paid for the groceries. Then Ella wanted to get some cigarettes. We were standing at the cigarette machine when Joe came into the store. He asked me to buy him a pie. I told him I was finished shopping, but if he wanted to get a pie, I would pay for it. In a moment, he forgot all about the pie because he told us to get out of the store. Were there any other people in the store? Yes, two fellows who had just checked out. So the four of you left the store at the same time? Yes. Did you know the other two people? No. Then what happened? Well, I guess he held up the store. I don't really know because I didn't see him do it. I know he had a gun pointed at me when I went out the door. Who went out the door with you? Ella. What did you do, both of you, at that time? We went to the car. Marvin had the trunk open, and he put the groceries in the trunk. At that time, Joe came out of the store, and he told us to stop or he would shoot. Ella and Marvin were already in the car. I was out of the car. When he told us to stop, I stopped, but they drove away. Where was this? It was in the parking lot. What happened after he told you to stop? Well, I just stopped. All right. And what did Joe do? He came up behind me with the gun, and he kept telling me I should get them to stop or he would shoot me. Then what happened? Well, they turned into the alley because I guess they were going to stop. I guess they could see through the rear view mirror that he had the gun on me. Then what happened? Well, then I guess he saw the police, so he dropped the gun and I picked it up. What did he do after he dropped the gun? He ran. Which way did he run? Through the parking lot. And he had dropped the gun on the ground? Yes. What did you do? I picked it up. What happened then? Well, the police came up. I had the gun beside my purse. How long after you picked the gun up did the police come? Just a few seconds. Then what happened? I handed the gun to them. I didn't try to run. Why did you pick the gun up? I was just so scared. I didn't know what to do. I just picked it up and told the police what happened. Did you ever put that gun into your handbag? No, I didn't. You had it in your hand and turned it over to the police, you said? Yes. And you told them exactly what happened? At the time I was handing the gun to them, I was telling my story. Then they just took me into custody and told me to be quiet. Did they take your bag? Yes, they did. Is that the same bag that you have now? Yes, it is. 
What did you have in the bag, if you recall? I had some pills and a wallet and a makeup case with some money in it. Was the money in your makeup case? There was money in the makeup case and in the bottom of the bag. Do you recall about how much you And we'll get ready for your 140s. Any questions, Monica? No, no questions. Okay. So on 140, number one, you have Edward King, Chicago Police Department, District 7, Officer King, Liberty Drugstore, Ridge, Howard, Devon and Western, Officer Mitchell, Officer Dennis, Officer Taft, Specialist Kelly, and Homicide Squad. This will be your 140 Q&A number one for five minutes, and it starts in the middle. Your name is Edward King? That is correct. You are a police officer with the Chicago Police Department. That is correct. You are assigned to District 7, is that correct? I am presently assigned to the training and education section. Pardon me, on July 16 of this year, you were assigned to District 7. Is that correct? That is correct. What shift were you working on that particular day? On the 16th of July? Yes. We were working the 11 to 7 or the third shift. That would be going from July 16 into the morning of July 17. That is correct. Officer King directing your attention to approximately a quarter to one on July 17 of this year. Did you respond to a police broadcast directing police officers to the Liberty Drugstore at Ridge and Howard? I did. Where were you when you first heard that broadcast? I was in a marked police vehicle located in the area of Devon and Western. Do you know what time that broadcast came over the air? The exact time, I do not remember. How long did it take you to get from where you were to the area of the Liberty Drugstore? Approximately four minutes. When you arrived there, were other officers present? Yes, sir, there were. Could you estimate how many were there? There were at least two officers on the roof of the drugstore, and there was one officer in the alley alongside the store. When you were at the drugstore, did you hear another broadcast concerning this incident? Yes, sir, I did. What was that broadcast? That broadcast concerned two individuals who were running south on Ridge. When you heard that broadcast, what, if anything, did you do? I started to return to my police vehicle. What, if anything, did you hear or see at that time? I heard a sound, but I couldn't distinguish what it was. Following that sound, I heard what seemed to be three or four shots in rapid succession. What did you do when you heard the shots? I entered my police vehicle and started to drive south on Ridge. What, if anything, did you see? Prior to seeing anything, I heard another broadcast. What was the broadcast? That was a broadcast from Officer Mitchell, who said that he had an injured police officer in the street. You continued going south. That is correct. What did you see? I saw a police vehicle parked at the curb with the engine running. Immediately to the rear of this vehicle, I saw a police officer tending a second police officer who was lying on his back in the street. Were there any lights on the police car? Yes, sir. Did you know the officer who was lying on his back? Yes, sir, I did. Who was he? He was Officer Dennis. What, if anything, did you do? Immediately upon arriving at the scene, I went to the officer who was lying on the ground. Officer Mitchell was attending Officer De Dennis. An ambulance had been summoned. It came promptly. Officer Dennis was placed on the stretcher 
and he was removed from the scene. Did you recover or did you pick up any personal items belonging to Officer Dennis? The only item that I came in contact with at the time was his revolver, which was handed to me by Officer Taft. To whom did you give that revolver? I gave the revolver to Specialist Kelly of the Homicide Squad. Did you examine the revolver before you gave it to Specialist Kelly? The only examination I made was a visual one. The only thing I can say is there was powder emitting from the cylinders. Were there a number of policemen around at that particular time? That is correct. How many policemen were at the scene? Do you know? There were several police there. I just don't know how many. Did you notice anything else belonging to Officer Dennis, either on the sidewalk or in the street? Yes, sir, I did. What was it that you noticed? It was a watch with a torn watch band. It was handed to me later by Officer... Um, and so we'll get ready for your next test. Um, was Ridge on those proper words? Yes, okay. yes, uh-huh, Ridge is on there. <clears throat> okay, and we'll get ready for your next test. <coughs> Excuse me, you yes. have, off thank you, Officer Perry, you have Joe, Ella Berg, you have Marvin Ross. And this is going to be, any questions, Monica? No, no questions. Okay. This is going to be your test number two for five minutes, and it's 1.40, and it starts in the middle for five minutes. Officer Perry, the first time you saw the defendant, was she carrying some packages out of the store? No. She was walking around the corner with her handbag, and that's all. Did you see her come out of the store? I did not. When you apprehended her, was she in the car or outside? She was outside. Outside of the car? She was about 30 feet away from the car. Was any other person with her? No. Were the other two persons in the car? They were. And the defendant was not in the car? That's correct. Now, when you came up to her, she handed you the pistol, did she not? That's not correct. Did she tell you where she got the pistol? After I explained her rights to her, I saw the pistol in her handbag. Did she explain to you that the man named Joe had given it to her as he was running out of the store? Did she explain that to you? She told me that as she walked out of the store with this person behind her, he handed her the weapon and then walked west through the parking lot. Did she tell you if anybody else was walking out of the store? No, she told me it was just the two of them walking out of the store. She and this man named Joe? That's correct. When she handed the gun to you, did she tell you that it belonged to Joe and that he had dropped it? She didn't hand the gun to me. She explained to me as I was looking at it in her bag that this gentleman had handed her the gun and that she put it in her bag. All right. Did she tell you that she believed this man had held up the store? She did say something to that effect. And did she tell you that she had been shopping in that store? No, she didn't. Did the other lady tell you that she was shopping in the store? She may have told my partner. I wouldn't have any knowledge of that. We did find a receipt with the name of this store 
in the bag that the groceries were in. There were groceries in the bag, were there not? That's correct. And the bag was in the car. There were two bags in the car. Grocery bags? That's right. With groceries in them? Right. You didn't speak to Ella Berg at all, did you? Not until we were en route to the station. Did you speak to her at that time? I asked her what her name was. Did you ask her any other questions? I asked her for her address and her age. Any other questions? None. Did you ask her what she was doing there in the car? No. Did you ask her if she knew what had happened? No. You didn't place her under arrest, did you? All three were placed under arrest and taken to the station. What happened to Ella Berg? She was released due to lack of evidence. Who was the third person? I believe his name was Marvin Ross. Did you make any effort to locate this Joe that the defendant told you about? After I placed her under arrest and took her back to where the car was, my partner talked to the maintenance man inside the store. He asked him if he saw anybody and he said no. Did you check with the store manager to determine whether there had been a holdup? I did not, but my partner did. The manager said that there had been a holdup at the store. Now, when you first saw this car, how many people were in it? Two. You said it was moving? Yes. The car had just turned the corner. Where did it stop? It stopped about 10 feet from the edge of the building. Is that a parking lot? No, it's a driveway. Is this driveway used by shoppers to go to the shopping center? No. Did you see anybody get out of that car? Nobody. And the two people remained in that car? When I left the area... Okay. And so that concludes your test, Monica. Good luck. Okay. And <clears throat> Thank you. Here, do, were you going to scan them to you? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, Kat's going to scan you your papers. Okay, Monica? Okay. Thanks. Have a great day, Monica. You too. You guys. We'll see you. Bye-bye.